The robot is now awake and is about to crawl under the table to go to its den in the dangerous savanna in my living room. Its vision located in the front offers an advantage to observe the world around it. Now very slowly, the robot crouches to fit under the table and enter its den. Once it's inside, the robot is safe from all predators. In this video we are gonna build and we are gonna design the robot Pavlov Mini together, so stick with me because we have work to do. First of all, we need to choose the motors that are going to move the joints of the quadruped robot. We are going to use the servo motors that are very easy to control and have a torque of 12.5 kg centimeters. This means that if I attach a 10 cm long arm to one of the servo motors, the maximum weight it can carry on the other end of the arm is 1.25 kg. This is the torque of the servo motor when I power it with 5 volts. But actually the torque increases as the voltage increases. For example, using 8 volts, the servo motor can lift this weight easily. These motors will limit both the size and the weight of the robot. Here is how we can estimate the maximum weight these motors can bear. Ok, let's assume that the robot has at least 2 out of 4 legs on the ground at all times. Then the motors on these two legs must be strong enough to carry the whole weight of the robot. This is the schematic of the robot. These are the two legs that are on the ground, these are the motors, and these are the 10 cm long lower legs that are attached to the motors. Since each motor can carry up to 1.25 kg and the weight of the robot will be equally distributed, the maximum weight the two legs can carry is 2.5 kg, which will be our robot's maximum weight. So, let's try to design a robot that weighs less than 2.5 kg. When designing a quadruped robot, the best thing is to make the body symmetrical, so that the center of mass of the robot is going to be located at the same distance from all the legs, which will make it easier for the robot to walk in a more stable way. Another tip is to distribute most of the weight of the robot as close as possible to the torso and make the legs very light. But why? Well, this has to do with inertia. Imagine a robot that is heavier near the feet. Then the inertia of the foot could be very large and there will be a higher resistance against motion when the feet are lifted. This will cause the torso to fall down and balance in the robot. So what we want is to have most of the mass concentrated in the torso. And this is not only true for robots. For example, large quadruped animals have very light legs and most of their weight is concentrated in the torso. That's why lifting their legs does not unbalance them. Batman, come on, get up. Get up, I need you to walk. I need to prove a point for my video. Come on, come on. Okay, back to the design. This software is called Blender and it's an open source tool for 3D modeling that I use to model all my robots. After a lot of hours designing this robot, this is what I got. These white pieces here represent rigid parts of the robot that I have to print in plastic with my 3D printer. The blue parts that you see are electronic components of the robot and the red pieces are the servo motors. Each of the legs will have three servo motors that will move three joints. The first servo motor is attached to the torso and will move the hip joint in this way. The second servo motor is going to move what I call the femur of the leg, while the third servo motor is going to move what I call the tibia of the leg. I have placed this servo motor above the knee joint so that the leg does not have too much weight away from the torso. And by using three joints, the foot can move in all three spatial dimensions. The first thing we do is to print all the parts in PLA with a 3D printer. And if you want to print this robot, you can find all these files in the description of the video.
and once all the parts are 3D printed, we can start building the robot. Okay, here we have the 3D printed parts of one of the legs, and here we have the three servo motors. The first thing we're going to do is to assemble the first hip joint. For that, we take a piece of plastic that corresponds to a quarter of the torso, and we fix one of the servo motors with two screws. Now we're going to place this bearing on the PLA piece to help the rotation of this joint. We simply press the bearing into the plastic piece and with help of a screw here, we fix it. By the way, I left the list of the components to build this robot in the description of the video. This is the second piece of PLA that is going to be attached to the servo motor shaft and is going to rotate in this way. First, we attach this aluminum disc to the PLA piece using two screws. And now we just have to press the two pieces together until the servo motor shaft is completely fixed. This joint is further fixed thanks to a screw that goes through the servo motor shaft. That's it, the first joint works. Let's move to the second one. Unfortunately, I lost this video, so I'm going to explain this assembly using Blender. Here we have the second servo motor that we attach to the second PLA piece. We take another bearing like the previous one and we fix it in a similar way. Now we take the femur and we press this small bearing into it. And from the other side, we slide the tibia through the small hole of the bearing. We take another aluminum disc, we screw it to the femur and we press the femur into the hip until the shaft of the second servo motor is fixed. There you go. Finally, we take the third servo motor and we attach this pulley to the shaft with a screw. This pulley is gonna transmit the torque of the servo motor to the knee joint by means of a belt. We slide the servo motor into the femur, we pass one end of the belt around the pulley, and we insert the two ends of the belt into the two anchors of the tibia, making sure that the belt is tense. Now we insert a screw through the small bearing to secure the knee joint, and we put one screw here and one here to secure the belt ends to the tibia anchors in order to prevent the belt from slipping off. One is in place, so let's do the other one. There you go. Finally, we fix the third servo motor to the femur using two screws and we make sure that the belt is well tensioned. Here is good and here is also good. Perfect, this is how the knee joint looks like. In the last step, we cut a rectangle from a rubber material so that the robot doesn't slip on the floor and we attach it to the foot with the help of a zip tie. There you go. And now we cut the leftovers like this. And that's it, we finished one of the legs. And now we repeat everything for the other legs. Now we are going to assemble the torso. The torso is divided into four quarters that are assembled like this. First one half, then the second half and finally all joined together. As each leg has already a quarter of the torso, we take two of the legs and join them together using the anchors in the torso and fix them using two screws. One here and one up here. Ok, and this half is ready. We do the same with the second half and we join the two halves by the anchors of the torso, fixing them using screws. Now we are going to add the battery. Since the battery is the heaviest element of the robot, we put it centered at the bottom of the torso so that the weight is distributed in a symmetric way. We fix the battery, taking into account that the two poles of the battery here have to coincide with these holes in the torso. Now we attach one PLA piece so that the battery doesn't move and we screw it to the torso here and another PLA piece over here. The last step is to fix the Raspberry Pi to the torso, using these two PLA pieces that we screw to the Raspberry Pi with the small screws. One is on place, and now the other. We attach this to the torso, which gives more stability to the body, and we fix it using screws. 
and the last one here and that's it we finally finished the assembly of the robot and this is the result But is this the final version of the robot where everything works perfectly? Ah, uh, I wish. When I decided to test the design of the robot, everything was working perfectly until I had problems with the knee joint, making the robot to walk in a bad way. The problem was that the femur PLA piece was bending a little bit due to the tension from the belt. And in the end, the belt lost tension and it became loose which made the servo motor not transmit the torque to the knee joint. The design of the robot is one of the most important steps and it requires iterations modifying the robot over and over again in order to improve it and to optimize it. And the best way to do this is to do an initial design, build the robot, test it, and then see what is wrong or what could be improved in the design. So, I decided to go back to the design again and modify the femur to solve this problem. I printed the new femur with my 3D printer and this is the assembly of the new leg. The femur is now divided into two parts. The first thing we do is to fix an aluminum disc with the screws in one of the parts of the femur, as we have done before. Like this. Now we add two nuts in these two holes which will serve to join the two parts of the femur later. We attach this part of the femur to the second servo motor and we fix it with a screw here. There you go. Ok, so the first part of the femur is well fixed. Now we are going to take the second part and as before, we add this small bearing and we press it into here. We fix the bearing here with a screw so it doesn't move because this bearing is going to support the rotation of the knee. And we make sure that the bearing is securely fixed. We attach the servo motor to the knee but we put it in the opposite direction to how we have done it before, like this. We attach the pulley to the servo motor with a screw as before. There we go. And now we take the belt and we fix the ends to the anchors of the tibia, in the same way as in the previous version. First we fix one of the ends of the belt using a small screw. We insert the tibia into its position to see how long the belt has to be and we slide it around the servo motor pulley. Finally we take the other end of the belt, leave it a little bit loose and attach it to the second tibia anchor with a screw through the anchor. Now we attach the servo motor over here with two long bolts and nuts. We also add this little nut to each of the bolts, like this one, one over here and one over here. We also insert these small bearings, two in each bolt, which are going to keep the belt tight around the pulley. Finally, we add this cylindrical nut to the bolt so that the bearings don't come out. Now we take the tibia and we fix it to the femur with a screw that goes through the bearing making sure that the belt is tight. Like this. And now we add here this small bearing on the other part of the femur, where the screw that we just put in will be seated. The final step is to join the two parts of the femur, which we fix with two bolts that will be screwed to the nuts that we have put before. The belt is tense and that's it, we have the final version of the robot. Let's see if our design is within the weight limit that we have estimated before. And yes, the weight is less than 2.5 kilograms.
and we are done with the design, at least for now. I hope you liked the video, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and let me know in the comments what you think about this robot. Remember that you can support my project, which is open source, through my Patreon account or through my PayPal. You can find the links in the description below. Thank you so much for watching, don't forget to follow me in social media and see you in the next video where I will explain the electronics of the robot.